Hi, today I'm going to demonstrate how we can use the propeller chip with Tachyon 4th on an RS485 network. We have a little tiny chip there, that's the 485 chip. And instead of a twisted pair for the balance line, we're just using ribbon cable. We can get away with that because we're running over several meters and this is inside a large cabinet. Uh, same principle applies for RS485 networks over longer distances of hundreds of meters or more. So uh, essentially what happens is that we have 12 boards over here, they're all loaded up uh, with the unique ID 1 through to 12 and they're all equipped with an RGB LED. So we can do a few little um, games with that, we can see uh, which one we're talking to. And what's happening is we have a board down here with a propeller chip and a few over here which we can't see. Might just take it down a little bit there so we can see what's going on. Ah, yeah, there's the board down there. Okay, bring it back again. What we're going to do now is pass the ball across to a device. In this case, it might be a select code like number nine. Number nine is going to respond back, pass the ball back again, just like a ping pong ball. And then if this unit has anything to say, it will pass a ball over to it with something on it. And if it has anything to say, it will respond back. When they don't have anything to say, it's simply a null, uh, an ASCII, uh, ASCII null, which is zero hex. We're just sending backwards and forwards. If uh, this unit doesn't have anything to say, it sends a null back and vice versa. Let's have a look at how that works. We're going to initialize the bus. And what that does is load up the high-speed UART uh, ROM image from upper double EEPROM into these cogs. Uh, we've set this up for three buses, but we're only using the one bus over here. What I'm going to do is talk to number 10 over here. I'm going to have a chat with it, as if I plugged in uh, by full duplex uh, console. Let's have a chat with this one. Here we go. It comes back with an OK from number 10. I can give it a command. Let's have a look. Uh, it's got a whole heap of stuff that's wrapped around because we have such a large font on the screen at the moment. But uh, we have commands in there to, to run the LED, dim red, etc. So let's try this out. Dim red. Here it goes. Number 10 is now going to a dim red. I'm going to jump across. I'm going to do number 8 as well have a chat with that one and make that a, a dim blue. Now this is a little trick I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to all of these all at the same time. So do a global chat. What happens when we select all of them at the same time? They don't try to talk back, they just simply listen. So global chat, I'm going to say turn off that LED and it turns off make them all uh, dim blues or in this case uh, let's give it the maximum value and turn it on make it ultra white how does that look all right camera hasn't cleared out so we're going to drop that back down to a dim green right. so we can see how we can talk to the boards let's have a look at what's happening on the bus over here we can see at the moment we're sending out this is triggering all the time, a null character, nothing is responding. I'm going to quit out of that global chat, drop back to bus number one on the prompt over here, this bus over here, and address unit number 10. So what happens when I select unit number 10? This is what we would do in, in our application. We would select a unit like this. Out goes the command with the MSB set, unit number 10 and it responds back with unit number 10. That's great. Now what we can do is send it an empty ball. See what it says if it has anything to tell us. So zero bus transmit and it has nothing to tell us. We'll just try that again. We'll use the control X to repeat this command. Uh, nothing to tell us. Okay, since we're talking to Tachyon 4th, we should be able to enter a carriage return. That should respond 
back with uh, an OK prompt. That's just like we see here now. So what I'm going to do is send through a carriage return. And we don't get anything back yet because it hasn't processed that and responded back yet. So the next time we send it a ball over an empty one, it may write something on it and give it back to us. So let's have a look what happens. We're going to send an empty ball over and we get a space character back. Let's send another empty ball over to it and it sends a space character back again. Send another empty one over and now it's sent one back with a little O on it, a 6F. The next character which should be a 6B which should be the small k. So send an empty ball, comes back with small k over here and then we should see a carriage turn line feed sequence at the end of it. 0D, 0A and then no more. So this ball has been going backwards and forwards so you can see that uh, we can simulate a full duplex network because we're going both ways very quickly and there's no uh, big packet delays and retries it establishes a connection point to point so that's really good um, if we wanted to we could send a command through to to uh, change an LED but it's much easier to do it from the console so uh, what I'm going to do again is put a little flashing routine in this one over here number three let's have a chat with that one and put a little demo program in there make it nice and simple just say dim red 200 milliseconds and then go to um, very blue for 100 milliseconds and then continue to do that until we get an escape key this ESC question mark passing a flag if an escape key is pressed and until taking that flag and exiting uh, this particular program. So we're going to run that program there and we can see that flashing wave. What I want to do now is talk to all the devices, give it the same program to run. How do I do that? Do a global chat. Of course we can do this under program control but we're doing this, there we go, coming back again, coming back to this, we're going to grab that, copy that, and paste it in. Okay, nothing happening yet. Type in demo, and away they go. That's really great. What else can I show you? I'll think of something later on.